today's video is about the Ford LTL 9000 truck. But first, I want to mention that in Toy Talk episode 39, I talked about the Ford CLT 9000 trucks. If you missed this episode, you can go to my channel or you can click with the link up here and watch it right now. Now, let's begin our discussion of the Ford LTL 9000 truck. Ford had been producing heavy-duty trucks since 1948. Ford, in 1958, started to market the Super Duty line of trucks. The lineup was marketed by various gross vehicle weight ratings. Truck weight classifications 1 through 8 were a new concept brought about by the Department of Transportation, National Highway Administration. The first dedicated Class 8 truck produced by Ford was the L-Series range, replacing the Ford F-Series range, Super Duties, and the N-Series, short conventional derived from the F-Series. Produced as both straight trucks and semi-tractors, the Ford L-Series encompassed a wide range of models through the Class 6 through 8 gross vehicle weight ratings. In medium duty, severe service, and vocational applications. The line would become one of the most popular series of trucks that Ford ever produced. With this simplified background, we can go on and talk about the LTL Ford 9000 series of trucks. Well, what do you know? A truck finally manufactured in Kentucky. The L series was produced by Ford at the Kentucky Truck Plant near Louisville, Kentucky. This gave rise to the nickname, the Louisville Line of Trucks. As part of a 1996 redesign, the model line actually took on the official Louisville nameplate. The Ford LTL 9000 is a large commercial truck designed for heavy loading and hauling. The vehicle is part of Ford's L series of trucks that were first introduced in 1970. The vehicle has served as a platform for a variety of trucks and purposes, including garbage trucks, dump trucks, and long distance haulers. Ford introduced the LTL 9000 in 1976. The LTL 9000 series trucks were designed as a premium truck for long haul drivers. The LTL 9000 became a major competitor to the Chevrolet Bison, the GMC General, the Kenworth W900, the Max Superliner, and the Peterbilt 359. The LTL 9000 was fitted with a set forward front axle and a longer hood. This version had more room for a larger powertrains. In 1978, Ford gave the LTL 9000 its own grille and headlight styling, including one of the first uses of the Ford Blue Oval in North America. Following the sale of Ford's heavy truck line to Freightliner in 1996, the L Series was discontinued by Ford at the end of 1998. Freightliner would concurrently take over production of the Ford L Series, opening its Sterling Truck subsidiary. The L-Series became the Sterling A-Line, Actera, and L-Line, remaining in production until 2009 when Sterling Trucks closed operations. And here we go, guys. This is Neo Scale Models 1978 Ford LTL 9000 Premium Long Haul Tractor with Penthouse Sleeper. The cab is resin, the sleeper is resin, and the frame is die cast. It comes in a hardboard sleeve with a black plastic base and a clear plastic lid. Also, it has that mirror piece in the back so you can sort of see the passenger side. Now, these display cases are great because they keep our models from getting nice and dusty and when we want to actually be able to see them. So, I love these display cases. Now, to get them out, they just pull right off and then the trucks are mounted with two screws underneath just two small Phillips head screws and be careful when you hold them put your forefinger and thumb 
on the to hold the truck forefinger on the frame and then thumb underneath and then just use a little a small to a medium size Phillips head screwdriver and take both screws out then carefully lift him off the base and why you want to hold him that way is so you don't break any of the small parts you know like the exhaust stacks or the air horns and that kind of stuff now let's go on and pick this guy up i have no idea where neo came up with this brown cream and orange the cream and orange is pretty striking but the brown kind of boring brown trucks just when you think brown all you think is ups these days but that's what they used on this truck kind of is probably why we didn't get a second run they didn't sell quite as well as they had hoped this should have been a great selling truck, but um, their color choice kind of hurt it. Anyway, it has 10-hole uh, aluminum wheels, front and rear. Nice vintage tread pattern tire. Little mud flaps hanging off the front fender and mud flaps hanging off the rear. Silver or yep, yeah, silver painted um, quarter fenders with little Ford ovals up there on the upper piece, the very top piece. It has resin mirrors, which are painted silver, resin exhaust, resin fuel tanks, and resin grill and bumper painted silver. Now, we like the chrome plating because it makes them flashy, but however, this is actually more prototypical of the real trucks. Door handle is there, and it is painted silver. It's a separate part. There's a little molded-in door lock. It has Ford right there written out in the graphic, and then you can see a photo-etched piece. That's the hood latch. Also, a photo etch piece is that grill. Inside, it's got brown high back seats, black steering wheel, brown dashboard, and a black gear shift in there. Real nice detailed interior. Nothing inside the sleeper, though. And with the removal of two screws, you could turn this easily into a day cab, which would be pretty nice to have a day cab, one of these two, because there were lots of LTL 9000 day cabs as well as these penthouse sleepers. And they had other sleepers too, including a flat top. Did a good rivet detail. Fuel tanks, but extra large fuel tanks. There's a battery box there. Really nice job. Turning around to the front. See that big Ford LTL 9000 grill, which was specific for the LTL 9000. All the other 9000 series uh, pr prior to 78 had the same grill and then the medium and the other trucks had the small had the same grill after 78 and the premium got its own grill it's very similar to the grill that was actually in the CLTs as well it's got individual turn signals there and these guys had four rectangular headlights two on each side and you can see them in there they're individual parts well each side they're an individual part there's not actually two lenses there's one lens but there is the sealed beam pattern on them there's also individual sealed beam driving lights down here in the bumper and those are pretty nice individual pieces it has a main license plate on the front bumper pretty cool then you can see the tapered ends on the bumper and the ford blue oval right there at the top of the grill as i said before this truck was one of the first uses of the blue oval the windshield is one big vacuum form piece, as are the side windows, and it has photo etched windshield wipers up there. Not the greatest, but they work pretty well. They show off well, but they're easy to break off the truck. Coming around to the passenger side, looks very much like the driver's side, same details on it, but the sleeper detail is a little different. There's a door there and toolbox. You also, you still got your uh, hood latch, it's a photo etch piece, fuel tank, battery boxes, Ford logo, that little grill, very, very nice piece. Turning them up to the top here, you can see it has the handhold where you would pull the grill forward when you were to check your hood because this is a tilt hood to check your oil and anything else in it. It's got a very nice visor here with the square style Ford roof lights and then the square 
air horns where it had rectangles in the front and the back instead of rounded. They tried to go a little more modern that way. Then you can see here, they're just painted on them, but they're painted black, and that is the um, windows for the sleeper. Really nice that they had those windows up there. It added a lot of light into the sleeper. And then you can see the roof, the tops of the exhaust stacks. And then they painted a little bit of black right there to make them look like they're hollow. Pretty nice job there. And then this cab is resin, and it molds out all of the detail very, very well in these cabs. It's very, very easy to get good detail out of these things. Turning them around to the back, and we'll hold them up first so you can see. It's got a fifth wheel that's set up for DCP, first gear, top shelf, or any other trailer that's set up with a straight kingpin. Real nice die cast frame, and it has a photo etched deck plate right there. So it looks like a stainless deck plate. Pretty, pretty nice that way. Turning them down a little bit, you can see the mud flap brackets are painted silver, and then the mud flaps are painted black with a real nice mud flap detail. They're all one piece, and they are a resin piece, so they'll be easy to break, just like the quarter fenders are resin. The license plate is just a piece that's put right on there and tampoed. Really nice. Not really where we would put a mud flap on a mu um, license plate on a mud flap, but that's what Neo did. Then the brake lights are part of the frame, and all he did was paint them red. They didn't make individual jewel brake lights. Let's look underneath here, and we can see it has Neo Scale models tampoed on the frame, and then 164 Ford LTL 9000 1978 tampoed on the other frame rail. As you can see, the frame rails are hollow. It's got the rear differentials and a real nice spring suspension, drive shafts from the transmission to the axle, and then between the two axles. Front suspension is spring, bottom of engine detail, and bottom of transmission detail. Steering, they just do not steer. But it has a nice tie rod on the axle, and the axle says made in China, and that's where it's cast. Hard to find anything that's not made in China. You can also see it has a really, really nice tread pattern, a vintage tread pattern tire on it. And then the hood doesn't open, but that's okay. How often do we display them with the hood open anyway? Now, because these were classic line haul trucks that lasted into the 90s, and there's still several of them running today, I'm going to show you guys what this guy looks like with a trailer behind it. And what I've got to show off is a pumpkin. A 53 foot for Schneider. Uh, Schneider runs a lot of owner operators and some of them guys ran Fords back in the day that run with them. And so you can see the Neo scale models, resin cab on die cast frame, 1978 Ford. LTL 9000 cab with penthouse sleeper pulling a 53 foot utility dry van trailer and that trailer is for Schneider. I so love the Ford L series trucks. They had such a wide range of vehicles with very 70s 80s styling. Even the last style update of them in the 1990s still felt modern for the time. Also being made in my home state helps out a whole lot in liking these trucks. Why not go on and add one of these models to your collection? After all, it is the only highly detailed LTL 9000 that has been offered in 164 scale. Buy one while limited supplies last on my website, farmtoysandmore.com, or use the link in the description below to my other site to get a special offer on this truck. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll be back on Tuesday with a review of a 64 scale construction piece. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'm closing up Advantage Diecast's Southside Warehouse on another episode of Toy Talk.